Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, as you can see, is charcoal landscape drawing. Now, maybe about two or three weeks ago, in a, one of the comments I replied to, I said I'd like to try and do, um, say, a triptych, so a sort of three panel version of one of these um, charcoal landscapes. So that's what I'm going to try this week. So I'm, I've got three, if you like, panels or three bits of paper. And it's not, it's not a very serious experiment. It's, it's mainly just for fun, just to see what it looks like. I've seen other people doing it and I liked the results. So I thought it'd be worthwhile trying it out. Each of the three parts of the triptych is arranged in a portrait format. There are the advantage of doing a landscape in portrait format is you've got that extra height to work with. And you can do a, f a few different things with that. You could have a more, you put more emphasis on the sky, for example, if you want to do a very dramatic sky with lots of thunder clouds or something like that. The disadvantage, you can also, another advantage of the portrait, I should say, is you can create a, a greater sense of depth within the landscape because you've got that extra height to work with. So you can squeeze in a bit more of the land as well. The disadvantage of doing landscapes in portrait format is you can't exactly create a sweeping landscape because you've got very little width to work with. So I'm interested to see how the final thing turns out because of course, adding in extra panels, if you like extra bits of paper, maybe that will compensate for the lack of width and you can create a, a feeling of a more expansive landscape. So if this, if I like the final results of it works out, um, I might even try at some stage in the future, trying a more panoramic view, um, putting in say five or six or seven panels instead of three. This whole idea of these um, multi-panel paintings or drawings, um, in the West anyway, the tradition seems to have emerged from um, religious art, um, churches. They were often used as a kind of backdrop for the altar in churches. And very often they had a larger central panel with some smaller panels on each side. But I've also seen in modern times people doing lots of non-religious, as I say, like landscape um, triptychs. And in other parts of the world, so in Japan, and I mentioned this maybe last week or the week before about ukiyo-e and the Japanese woodblock prints and how they had inspired me um, when I got started with doing watercolor and things. And I know that some of the ukiyo -e prints were also done as multi-panel um, pictures. So as an idea, it's certainly not unique to the West. In terms of, I suppose, materials and things, there's nothing special. It's just um, some uh, willow charcoal, a basic sketchbook. I use a kneaded eraser, which you can see that sort of, um, dirty black thing in the top right hand corner. And uh, an old piece of tissue paper just for smudging the charcoal. I don't use the kneaded eraser as an eraser as such. It's a drawing tool with the charcoal. So it's very good for, if you put some charcoal down, you can then lift off some of that charcoal, revealing some of the white paper underneath, um, just like you saw me doing there. So you can, you can build up layers of um, sort of different tonal values. And that helps to create a feeling of 
this is a three-dimensional thing that we're looking at. So this is the final version and I quite like it. I do like, I think it does create this sort of sweeping landscape sort of feeling. Certainly more than you can with just the one piece of paper. So as I say, an, a future experiment, I may try say six, seven, maybe even eight pieces of paper and try and get a more panoramic view, like a 180 degree type of view, just to see if, um, what it looks like. In terms of other things that I used um, to get this final image, so this is a, a JPEG image, a digital file. I use a scanner to scan, to turn the, the, the drawing into a digital file. I use a scanner. And then I use a couple of bits of software. One is called Affinity Photo, which just lets me, on the scanner, I set it to 300 DPI, just in case I ever want to print stuff out. But for the, the web and for YouTube and things, um, that's a bit big. So I reduce it down to 72 DPI. And I just use this thing called Affinity Photo to do that. And then I use another piece of software called Affinity Designer just to arrange the three images together to create a single JPEG. And it's just good for centering things up and making them sort of neat, nicely arranged. Okay, well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for uh, watching and hopefully see you in next week's video.